Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 9, Video Game Hardware. <clears throat> this is more of a review than a traditional Loser Jeff Show episode. Um, I'm going to be covering some uh, old school video game hardware here. I'm not touching base on the Xbox, the Wii, or the PS3. Sorry. Uh, those three systems, everybody has one, they know how it works, they know how to use it don't need a review. So I'm doing things a little bit different here uh, in this episode, switching it up a little bit and actually uh, talking about something that I like versus crap that pisses me off and, you know, gets me wondering what the fuck and, you know, all that stuff. Um, so, you know, with that said, let, wait. Now wait just a minute. Did you just say you doing things different this episode? Wow. I never would have thought. That's right, Backwoods Bob. I'm doing things differently this episode. Well, it's time to start the review. First, we're going to take a look at the Sega Saturn. Let's check it out. And here it is, da -na 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 -na. the Sega Saturn. Yes, the Saturn is actually one of my favorite video game systems in all time. And the reason for that being is because there were a lot of games that came out for it, specifically released in Japan only, that didn't come out for any other system, the PlayStation, the Xbox, or anything. And they never really saw the light of day here in America. So, uh, if you want to play some really cool import games that aren't available for uh, any other system, I recommend getting a Saturn. Now, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure the patent and the copyright is up for the Saturn uh, either now or very soon. So, um, I'm going to touch base on some uh, little gray area that's uh, not too legal, but not really illegal now. Um, uh, the Saturn here, it's a little thicker than the PlayStation, if you can see. Um, and it's also black as opposed to gray. Um, now, the only thing that I don't really like about the Saturn is uh, there's this thing that comes off right here. I don't know if I can get it off yet. And if you can see it, there's a battery right there. It looks like a watch battery. Yeah, um, if that goes bad, then you have to replace it. If you don't replace it, then you're not able to save your games or anything like that because that's what you save your games on. There is no memory card you know, slot on the front, just controller ports and uh, you know, the buttons. Now, this is a Model 2 Saturn. Uh, there is a Model 1 Saturn. The butts are more kind of like oval and round. Um, but the reason why I didn't get one of those and I got a Model 2 Saturn instead is because A, the Model 1 Saturns are, are kind of rare, and B, the Model 1 Saturns are a bitch to put a mod chip in. You have to do all kinds of uh, trace cutting and soldering and all kinds of crazy crap. Um... Now, my system is mod chipped. Um, I put the chip in myself. It's very easy. It's only really only one wire to solder onto the power supply. So um, it, it's, it's the easiest mod chip to install as opposed to a Xbox or a PlayStation or a PlayStation 2 uh, mod chip. Um, and I actually have a copy of a Japanese game. Uh, it's called Dracula X, uh, Nocturne in the Moonlight, also known as Castlevania Symphony of the Night here in America for the PlayStation. Um, now, I also have the game for the PlayStation, but the cool thing about it is, is that the Saturn version here actually has added stuff, like you can play two additional characters that you can't, well, you can play one additional character in the PlayStation version versus, you know, three playable characters in the Saturn version here. Um, 
Now you're probably wondering what this thing is on the is on the top. Uh, it's it's an action replay. It's like a cheat device. Um, it has like cheat codes and stuff in it and whatnot. It also serves as like a uh, a memory card kind of, but the system doesn't pick it up as a memory card. You actually have to manually copy your uh, your saved files from the little battery here in the back to this thing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, this thing up here, it, you know, it also allows you to uh, override the uh, region lockout. So you can actually play, uh, you know, foreign games on the system. And now, with the Sony PlayStation, the mod chip pretty much overrides the boot sector and, and the region coding and allows you to boot games, you know, from your region or... I'm sorry, from outside your region. Um, the Saturn is a little different. Um, the mod chip allows you to play backup copies from your region only. If you want to play a copied game from another region, uh, you either need this little device, which I think is about 30 or $40. I, I don't even know. I've, I've had it for years. Or what you could do is you could use this little nifty program. It's called the Sega Saturn Region Patcher. Now, what this does exactly is you get an image file or an ISO file, <coughs> a QBIN file, whatever, and you just load it into here. It says select Saturn image, you load it into here. <coughs> then a bunch of crap comes up over here. And then over here is where. Um, it'll usually have something checked in one of these boxes when you first load the ISO um, if it's a different region than where you're at all you do is uncheck it and then ch check your region and then click on patch and that's all you do and the game is now mod has now been modified to boot to your specific region so you don't need a uh, action replay card if you use this program because it modifies the region code so it <clears throat> so it will boot in your region versus uh, not booting in your region and having to use the uh, the action replay card. And that's uh, pretty much everything there is to know um, about the Saturn. I probably left, you know, a few things out, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> now the next system I'm going to be talking about uh, isn't an officially licensed uh, system. <coughs> it's actually a, uh, uh, I think they call them clones, system clones, uh, clone souls, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, Basically, a lot of these uh, consoles started popping up when the patents for the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, and the Sega Genesis uh, expired, um, I think, a few years ago. Um, <coughs> there's so many of these things out there, um, and it's actually hard to decide which one to get. Um, but I narrowed it down, and the actually the best choice, the best one to get is the Retron 3. Um, it's made by Hyperkin. Um, and what it does is uh, it plays Nintendo games, Genesis games, and Super Nintendo games. It, it, yeah, it's awesome. And um, it's got these like little rubber kind of like foamy things here on the bottom so if like you put it down somewhere on like a bookshelf and you're like yanking the controller to try to get it closer to you it's going to move very very little which is kind of cool um, <clears throat> now these things do come in two colors uh, this is the metallic or ash gray or whatever the traditional you know video game looking style there is another one that comes in red like fucking bright cherry red um, I did have one of those, and I found that the gray one is the way to go versus the red one. I don't know why, but the red one just sucked. This one is a little, it's like they put more effort into the gray ones than the red ones. I don't know. But um, anyway, you have, a, you have a little dial right here to select, you know, which, uh, 
which video game system you want to play you know power button reset button um, this thing uh, it, it feels light and kind of cheap um, and it actually does come with wireless controllers uh, that use this little infrared thing right here but I don't use the wireless controllers because if you notice it has ports on the sides and in the front for you know Genesis Super Nintendo and uh, Nintendo controllers so if you have an old school Nintendo controller or Super Nintendo controller like I do just plug it right on in and it works um, now uh, when, when you do plug it in um, you know it's got your standard got your standard um, you know power um, it's got actually S video which is cool and um, you know your your AV jacks, video jacks, and whatnot. Um, and right here is the switch to switch it from uh, I believe NTSC and PAL. Um, if it's not that, then it's okay. So it's it, it's a Japan switch. Okay, so this thing actually will play Japanese cartridges. You just flip the switch right here. That's kind of cool. Um, now it won't play every single Genesis, Nintendo, or Super Nintendo game. And the reason for that being is because some games actually have a lockout chip on them that enables them to only play in authentic hardware for that system. I actually popped in a uh, Genesis game a few weeks ago and I got this error on the screen that said, you know, not authentic hardware, game halted, or some bullshit like that. Um... But as far as this thing goes, it retails for about sixty bucks. Um, it's a very good buy, I think. Um, it even plays the uh, the unlicensed uh, Nintendo games, the ones with the crazy little switch here on the back that does absolutely nothing. I don't know, um, but yeah, it it plays the uh, the unlicensed games um, as well as licensed games obviously it wouldn't really be much of a video game system without it and you know of course it plays the uh, the regular Nintendo games as well kind of a death grip on this thing there we go yeah it plays the uh, the original Nintendo games as well so uh, where'd the Genesis one? Yeah, here we go. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, and you don't have to take the um, the cartridges out in order to play the different ones. All you do is move this. So I could leave this game in if I wanted to play this game. I just move the dial. Kind of neat. Um, well that's it for uh, episode 9 video game hardware review um, as usual I am your host uh, loser Jeff and we'll see you next time <laughs>